And it's our privilege now and pleasure to be joined by Stan Blake. Representative Blake, welcome to this Capital Outlook Profile. We're here in Green River. At great, the, to, um, yeah. great to be on here and welcome to Green River. Yeah, thank you so much. We're at the, um, the Green River Center of Western Wyoming College. Yes. And I think um, when some people think of Wyoming Community Colleges, they remember that there are seven community colleges, Angelette College, but they may forget there are many centers in Wyoming. Yeah, that's true. And this is a great facility up here. And I thought it'd be good to have our meeting up here. So yeah, and thanks and, for coming. Yeah, absolutely. It's our pleasure to be here. <clears throat> you are the longest serving Democrat in the House and the fourth wow. longest serving legislator in, in the House. Well, <laughs> you put it that way. It's uh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. But so, I, I enjoy uh, having that moniker to myself. But, Let's just start by, why did you run um, initially? You know, it all actually kind of started. My dad was a teacher in Evanston for years. And one of his courses that he taught, classes that he taught, was American Civics. And uh, which I, they probably don't even teach anymore that I know of. But So that instilled upon me that you should, uh, you know, do public service. And I, when I hired out on the railroad here, I joined my union. And I became the legislative representative for the local here in Green River. And I was at a meeting in Casper, and I think it was the Equality State Policy Center, and they were talking about, there's gonna be a seat open up in Green River. Who do we know that lives in Green River? And I was literally looking at the ceiling tiles, <laughs> and they asked me, so where do you live, Stan? And I go, I live in Green River, 460 West Railroad. And they go, that's in your district, you should think about it. So I did, I thought about my dad, and I thought, talk to my wife, and she says, let's do it. So I decided to run and try to make a difference. There aren't many Democrats in the House. <clears throat> why is that? Why do, you, why do you think there aren't as many Democrats in, in Wyoming's legislature compared to other states? Well, I think Wyoming Democrats are connected, unfairly, I think, to the National Democratic Party, because we are not the National Democratic Party. We represent people in Wyoming. You know, we're totally different. I'm, different as in more moderate, or is, is that the difference? I, I think we're way more moderate. In Wyoming, Wyoming Democrats know what pays the bills here, oil and gas, coal. And not saying we don't need to diversify that, but we realize what's going on. We are, my constituents love to hunt, love to fish. They love their guns, and I realize that. And that's, I think, we get a bad rap from the National Party here in Wyoming, so. Do you think Wyomingites would be surprised that you have an A rating from the NRA? I had fellow uh, legislators tell me that they were very surprised. That, but I do have an A rating from the NRA. I voted positively on almost every gun bill that comes before the House and the legislature. <clears throat> you work for the railroad, you're a switchman. Yes. What's a switchman? A switchman, well, we receive trains in the Green River Yard, and then I, I quantify it as like we sort mail. So we'll pull a cut of railroad cars out with our locomotive, and then I will switch the cars out into different rails, different destinations, and then we make a train or two a day, and then they leave town and we start all over again. And uh, so just switching railroad cars. So I bet you see some fairly cool graffiti. <laughs> I've, I see all kinds of graffiti, Craig, and some is astonishing. I, I post some of it on my social media pages. Some of the artwork is unbelievable, beautiful, and others is eh, questionable. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a car guy. Oh, yeah. Love muscle cars. How did that? Um, I love muscle cars. How did that, how did that start? Well, I think it um, goes back to my family. My dad always took care of his cars. Uh, he had an old 66 Impala, which I wish I still had today, but I don't. And I still have his 1974 International Scout. And work. I just love to tinker. When I retire, that's I'm going to be in the garage. My wife will have to come ring the dinner bell when it's time to come <laughs> in because I'm going to work on my cars. You go to a car show almost every year. I, I'm a member of the SEMA caucus. And, uh, and, SEMA, and what, is, what is the SEMA caucus? It's the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. 
And it's a caucus of like-minded legislatures, Democrats, Republicans, uh, federal, state. There's like 750 state legislators who are in this caucus. But we go to the SEMA show in Las Vegas and there's all kinds of celebrities there, cars, new products. So it's a great time, but wear some comfortable shoes. I'll say that. So you, you grew up in Evanston? That's true. Born in Colorado, moved to Evanston when you were very young. And then from Evanston, where did you go? I lived in uh, Evanston for 20 some years. And I moved to Cheyenne to become an iron worker. And uh, actually, I worked on some PBS towers up on Limestone. So you're one of those guys who didn't mind climbing way up there? I used to climb uh, <laughs> gigantic towers, uh, broadcast antennas, television. And that was all over the region or all over the country? All over the country. We worked all over the place, from Alabama to Washington State. So we worked a lot of places. Tell us tower you were on. Uh, Hemingford, Nebraska, for Nebraska Public Television. I think it was... 2,000 feet, so Is yeah. Is that an elevator part way up and you're it's climbing the rest? 1,500 feet up in an elevator, and then you climb the last 500 feet just to change a light bulb. So yeah, it's an expensive <laughs> light bulb to say the least. <clears throat> what was that like looking down? I mean, obviously you could handle heights. Heights never bothered me. And the people in the cars look like ants on the ground. So yeah, and when you drop a wrench from up there, oh. it's. Uh, Trouble. You say, look out below. <laughs> I hope they hear you. And then from there I moved, I hired on with the railroad in Green River. And I've always loved Southwest Wyoming, being raised in Uinta County. Sure. And, you know, we're kind of that Southwest Wyoming corner here. And so I hired out with them in Green River and been there 28 years. For those of us who watch the legislature every day, we watch you say the pledge. Correct. And then we hear this, play ball. And that's coming from you. <laughs> How did, that, how did that come about? Wow. I picked it up from uh, Representative Illaway, Pete Illaway, Cheyenne used to do it. And when he didn't run again, he kind of said, you sit up there in the corner of the Capitol, be great if you could do that. And I thought, you know, I'm an outgoing guy. I thought that would be great. So, and I believe somebody did it before him. I'm not sure who, but uh, yeah, special occasions, during the swearing in and stuff, the speaker comes and says, we don't need play ball today, Stan. So, uh, so yeah. It's an I, interesting I, metaphor for what happens in the house. Though, that's right. right. I mean, guys. And in the house, after, we, after I say play ball, we say our pledge, our prayer, we go greet each other. How's the family? How's your wife? How's your kids? So we have like five, ten minutes where we just talk to each other. And then we get down to the business of the state of Wyoming. You've um, contemplated, I'm sure, Wyoming's future like many of your colleagues have. What is Wyoming going to be 10, 15, 20 years from now? <sighs> Obviously, the governor has his, Governor Mead had the Endow Initiative Correct. to economically diversify Wyoming. What's your vision of Wyoming 15 years down the road or so? Well, I want to keep Wyoming a great place to live in for our kids. I want to keep our public lands available for everybody, not just the few. But we have to diversify our economy. Now, a lot what, of people what, have different opinions. Now, what does that mean to you, Representative? To, to me, here in Southwest Wyoming, to diversify our economy here, we have Sodash or Trona. There's four mines right around here that run the economy of Southwest Wyoming. And that's used in making glass, detergent, fertilizers, everything you could imagine has sodash in it. We have abundance of water, we have great power, we have coal. I would look at a facility here to become a manufacturing facility. Why do we ship sodash to make glass when we can make that glass here? And it would be a huge investment by the counties, the state, but I look at that, I look at, we need to look at wind, solar, all kinds of different things. But a manufacturing facility in Southwest Wyoming would be fantastic. I've been told you can sing. And I've been told that you kind of carry the weight of the house on your shoulders in certain competitions each year. Yeah. Is, is that an accurate that statement? That is true. We, <laughs> we have a House versus Senate karaoke smackdown, I call it. And the House did pretty good the first couple of years, but... Uh, 
We've lost three years in a row, but this is the year we're going to come back. I've already got some songs on my phone here that I'm working on, so the house is going to uh, take that trophy back, I'm afraid, this year. You were telling me about some days of years ago in the Capitol, when, and there are times at the end of the session when you're not as busy as you are at the start of the, start of the session. You might be waiting for something to come over from right. the Senate, and there's some idle time at the very end. There used to be music on the House floor. We used to... Representative Barbudo, when he was there, would set up a piano or electric organ. We would sing. Uh, Bill Thompson, who recently passed away here from Green River, would play his banjo. I did a medley of uh, all the service, uh, Marine Corps hymn, Navy hymn, Army, Air Force. We sang all those. It was a good time. We, John Patton, who passed away, mm -hmm. he had a song that I still have a copy of. And, uh, we used to sing that, and uh, you know, singing opens up your soul and drops all barriers, and you can have some real camaraderie singing. But it, it was fantastic, and we've kind of gotten away from that. And uh, but I think that's a good way to open up the new capital would be a great uh, music uh, <laughs> well, thing. There. That's coming upon us here. We'll have to see yeah. if, if something that that bears out. Your go-to karaoke song is. Probably Stormy by the Classics Four. Okay. Yeah, I love that Give one. me a few bars here. <clears throat> Yesterday's love was like a warm summer breeze, but like the weather you've changed. Awesome. Good enough? Perfect. <laughs> Representative Blake, this has been a wonderful Capital Outlook profile. We look forward to seeing you more in the, se in the session. And congratulations on your reelection. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. This program is supported in part by a grant from the BNSF Railway Foundation dedicated to improving the general welfare and quality of life in communities throughout the BNSF Railway Service Area. Proud to support Wyoming PBS. And in part by the Wyoming Public Television Endowment and viewers like you.